Our next witness is Ms. Perales. You are now recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman and members of the Judiciary Committee, thank you very much for the invitation to testify today. My testimony will focus on the particular impact of several current Texas policies on Latinos and how these policies operate together to make it more difficult for Latinos to vote. Despite a very long history of exclusion from the electorate and other aspects of civic life, a history that's been recognized by Congress and US Supreme Court decisions, Texas Latinos are registering and turning out to vote in increasing numbers. For example, in November, 2018, Latinos cast about 19% of the total votes in Texas, an increase of five percentage points over the previous midterm election. About half of the people in Texas turning 18 each year are Latino. So we're really coming into the electorate. However, at the same time, the Latinos are working to overcome the participation gap. Texas has undertaken a series of policies that just make it harder for Latinos to vote. Senate Bill 1, which you've heard about, is one such policy. It imposes restrictions on voting, voter assistance, and voter outreach. And in particular, SB1 criminalizes what is otherwise legal helping of voters and legal encouraging voters to vote. I'd like to share a specific incident from Bear County, where I live, the city of San Antonio. This voter, whom I will call Mr. Cantu, is 84 years old and his wife is 77. They're both Mexican American and longtime voters. They applied for mail ballots before the March primary elections, but they received rejection notices from the county elections office. They were very confused because they had both provided their driver's license numbers on the application, which is the new requirement of SB1. When Mr. Cantu called the Bear County Elections Office, he was bewildered by what the worker told him because the worker told him that he and his wife had to fill out new voter registration forms. This is confusing because Mr. Cantu and his wife have been registered for many years. And it was only after working with staff from Southwest Voter Registration Education Project, a local nonprofit, that Mr. Cantu and his wife submitted new voter registration forms and ultimately were able to vote by mail. These experiences happened all over Texas. SB1 predictably and by design forces the rejection of mail ballot applications and mail ballots when the county doesn't have the driver's license or the social security number of the voter. The only way to fix it is to fill out new paperwork and try again to vote. The problem is that the voters least likely to overcome obstacles are those with less formal education, less access to technology, or voters who are limited English proficient. In addition to the debacle with the mail ballots, SB1 deprives voters of help in the polling place and with their ballots to which they have the right under federal law. In Hidalgo County, the community-based organization La Unión del Pueblo Entero, known as Lupe, reduced the number of staff it provided to assist voters in the March primaries because of the new crimes created by SB1. It is now illegal for a voter to use an assistor to help her navigate the polling place, interact with poll workers, learn to use voting machines, and understand issues on the ballot. As a result, in the March primaries, voters who traditionally rely on Lupe staff to help them vote did not receive this assistance. SB1's restrictions on voter assistance have a particularly negative impact on voters who are limited English proficient, such as naturalized US citizens. Slightly more than half of naturalized US citizens who are Latino describe themselves as not speaking English well. And Texas is home to close to 2 million naturalized U.S. citizens, the vast majority of whom are either Latino or Asian American. All of these limited English proficient individuals who are U.S. citizens have the right to receive assistance when they vote. Finally, SB1 is unfolding against a backdrop of Texas's renewal of its voter purge targeting Latinos and Asian Americans. In 2019, after the debacle of the voter purge here in Texas, where a federal judge had to 
issue an injunction to stop it because it was targeting naturalized U.S. citizens. Texas promised not to do it again. But instead, uh, Texas has undertaken to start the purge once again. In the fall of 2021, Texas made a new list of 10,000 registered voters who it claimed were suspect, suspected of being non-U.S. citizens, and once again instructed counties to issue letters. And once again, naturalized U.S. citizens stepped Thank forward you. and declared that they were being targeted in the purge. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Travis. Your time has expired. Thank you for your testimony.